This is an Intel i5-6600K, and this video is actually being made before launch, that's really awesome. Now stick around if you want to find out more about this awesome little chip and what it can do. Check out our website at techteamgb.co.uk for more info on both this and many other products, and also up-to-date news on all things tech. Stick around for this awesome video. So as you can see on the embargo notice in this uh, document here, uh, as of August 5th at 1pm GMT, Intel officially launched these two new processors. There are i7-6700K and the one we have here, which is the i5-6600K. Now the main difference between them is what uh, the i5 doesn't have hyper threading, and the i7 does, and also the um, i7 has 8 megabytes of cache, whereas this i5 has 6 megabytes of L3 cache. Now there are some new overclocking features, including full base overclocking, our base clock uh, adjustments to be able to overclock and also if you want to check out this processor sort of platform overview feel free to pause here. Now this is a socket 1151 chip so it won't fit in a Z97 board and it won't fit uh, and a Z97 chip won't fit in this board as far as I'm aware. As you can see the gold pins on the bottom are covered over uh, for the sort of that where, where it should be a, a rectangle is covered over um, and yeah it looks pretty cool we're gonna be doing some benchmarks and stuff like that after I just run over a few different specs and you know what's really good about this now in terms of the platform itself the Z170 sort of platform it seems really cool with things like NVMe SSD support built in I know that there's at least one ASUS motherboard with the NVMe connector on it next to the SATA port, so that's really awesome. You've also got USB 3, uh, 3, 3 and 3.1, um, especially 3.1 being quite standard on boards, as well as seeing Type-C connectors on board, so that's really cool as well. Um, DDR4 support, um, I'm not too sure if you can actually, uh, um, as far as I'm aware, you can run DDR3 on Skylake. Um, biggest problem with that, at least in my eyes, is that um, you'll get boards, some boards that run DDR3 and some that re run DDR4. The higher end boards will all run DDR4, I'm, I'm, I'm certain of, but if you're looking for a lower end board, you may have some trouble with finding which one has which, so just be careful if you do look to buy um, one of these chips and obviously our motherboard to go with it. Just make sure you know the exact, you know, the right um, RAM type for this because they won't fit in each, uh, each other slot and they won't work. So you'll end up having to return them and have to wait and that just kind of sucks. So keep a look out for that and obviously um, if you did want to grab this uh, or the Asus motherboard or any other uh, motherboard, check out the Amazon links in the description down below and uh, you can grab those as well. So we're going to do a couple of synthetic tests, starting off with Nova Bench. So um, with the 6600K, we got a 1747. Now to compare this to the last generation, which is the uh, i5 4670K, the 4670K got around about 1483, um, which is obviously a, a considerable amount less than the 6600K, which is pretty cool. Now, to compare it in Cinebench, the uh, 6600K got 656 or 656 uh, Cinebench points versus the 4670K, which got 540. Obviously, a big difference, and in our testing, we saw that the, um, the 6600K actually perf uh, com uh, performed very similarly to a 4670K, which is obviously the step up from the uh, older i5. Now, we wanted to do some real-world testing with games, uh, so we ran um, a lot of our, our benchmark suite with the Zotac GPU. Unfortunately, um, for First of all, we couldn't get Crisis 3 working, and we also couldn't actually get the 4670K in to test with this um, chip, so we're actually using a G3420. It's still Intel, it's, a, it's still an 1150 chip, but um, it's this comparison is mostly just uh, kind of shocking to me, which is why I put it in, which is that even though these games aren't DirectX 12 because there aren't any as of filming, um, there is such a huge difference between these results. Obviously, with Grid 2, we're getting 140 versus uh, 80 or 90 there. Um, and in Bioshock Infinite, as you'll see at the end, we got 168 FPS on the 6600K, but we're getting 118. Obviously, that's big numbers, and that's really cool, and this is all at 1080p with ultra settings, but that's kind of crazy. We're having a 60 or a 50 FPS difference just because of a different CPU. That's that's a lot of frames, so, you know, um, it's personally interesting to me and obviously shows how powerful the 6600K is, which is obviously really cool. Now we're going to move into the awards and just give you an idea of who should get this, why should get it, and just what I think of it. 
So as I said, this is a really great chip. I mean, I can't really necessarily think of any cons for this one. Um, it's great value, you know, obviously we've got uh, the, the whole motherboard uh, or the, the platform support is great for all the newest features and stuff like that, so that's really cool. Um, so as I said, I can't really think of pros and cons, so I'm not going to put them here necessarily. Um, but just for uh, the actual awards, it's going to get a 4 for 5 money. Um, the only reason it's not going to get a 5 for this and get the Budget Buster Award is just because it's not um, like the single best value for money for everyone. Obviously if you're a gamer this is probably going to be really great for you um, and if you're looking for a new PC definitely check this out and um, check out pricing in the uh, links down below but um, you know it's just it's not perfect for that um, so it can't get a 5 for that one um, but it's actually going to get a 5 for everything else obviously um, for functionality it's going to be a 5 because it's a great platform for, um, for, for performance it's also going to get a 5 purely because um, not only do you have a great overclocking support uh, on the platform and on the chip, but also you get amazing performance. Uh, uh, from my tests, especially in Cinebench, you can actually see the, the scores be that um, this chip, uh, the 6600K, the i5, um, hits the exact same or almost uh, similar uh, in the term, in terms of performance from a 4770K, which is really cool, and obviously uh, that should uh, ba balance the price out a little bit as well. So that's awesome. And then uh, style, oh, it's a chip. Cool. Um, it's actually, you know, it looks really cool. So that's that's cool. And for 10 GB score, it's gonna get a five, just because it is a great chip to get if you're looking for a new PC. So that's why you're gonna get the, uh, it's gonna get the uh, gamer approved award. Um, honestly, if you are a gamer and you're looking for a new PC. Check this out, it's it's a great, as I said, a great value. You get great performance. I mean, as I showed in uh, the benchmarks, you you know, between a quad-core Pentium, uh, which is Haswell, to uh, a, yeah, a Skylake chip, there is a huge difference, like literally 30 to 40 FPS difference in some games. Obviously, with DirectX 12 around the corner as well, um, you know, cores are going to be become more important so that's really cool as well um, that sort of stuff is just it's a great chip you should check it out check out the links in the description and uh, yeah so thanks for watching check out the written review if you want any more information or benchmarks or all that sort of stuff um, so that will all be hopefully on my face or some of like that or I might throw the, uh, the website over this so who knows and uh, yeah other than that thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already it helps out a lot and obviously you get more awesome reviews like this one we might even be able to check out the i7 6, uh, 6700k next week so keep an eye out for that one um, we're not sure just we might and uh, yeah we'll be checking out more uh, Z107 motherboards um, over the coming weeks from uh, loads of other people as well so as I said stick around subscribe hit the like button if you like it if you want to see more CPU reviews also leave us a, a comment down below if you both enjoyed the video uh, didn't like it what you did or didn't like and also what tests you want to see us do because obviously we did some real world games and we did a few sort of synthetic benchmarks like Cinebench and Novabench but you know what do you think let me know in the comments down below so other than that, um, I said thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. So thanks for watching this Titan GB video. Uh, you've probably heard enough of me already, so I'm going to finish off by saying please subscribe if you haven't already. It helps us out a hell of a lot and it means that just the world is in general. Please do feel free to check out some of our recent videos both down below. Um, they're uh, more recent ones and they're certainly awesome. Uh, feel free to click my face for the website and click all the links over there for our Amazon affiliate uh, link, our social media and also our YouTube channel as well. Other than that, as I said, please subscribe, like, share, favourite and all the other many things possible and we'll see you all in the next video.